In the last video, we looked at some simple color theory, and we talked about the fact that most organic molecules absorb light in the UV region, and therefore don't have any color of their own. In this video, we're going to see how conjugation and MO theory help to explain the color that we observe in some organic molecules. We're going to start with this molecule over here on the left, which is the ethene or the ethylene molecule. It has one double bond, and uh, we know, therefore, it has two pi electrons. So I just went ahead and highlighted the, uh, the two pi electrons in yellow. This carbon on the left and this carbon on the right are both sp2 hybridized. Therefore, each one of those carbons has a p orbital. And so the, in total, the ethene molecule has two pi electrons and two p orbitals. Those two p orbitals are considered to be atomic orbitals. So we have a total of two atomic orbitals for this molecule. According to MO theory, the two atomic orbitals are going to recombine to form two molecular orbitals, one bonding molecular orbital and one anti-bonding. And so if I were to put those molecular orbitals on an energy diagram, so we have increasing energy, I know that the bonding molecular orbital is lower in energy than the anti-bonding. So this will represent the bonding molecular orbital, and then higher in energy would be the anti-bonding. Go ahead and draw a line to separate the bonding molecular orbitals from the anti-bonding molecular orbitals like that. I have uh, two pi electrons in the ethene molecule. According to MO theory, they're going to occupy the lowest energy orbital available, which of course be the bonding molecular orbital. So here are the two pi electrons in the bonding molecular orbital, which we could also call our pi orbital like that. The anti-bonding one up here is initially empty. We'll call this the pi star orbital like that. There is obviously a difference in energy between my two orbitals. That difference in energy turns out to be approximately 690 kilojoules per mole. And so if you were to give one of these, one of these pi electrons uh, 690 kilojoules per mole, that's enough energy to temporarily promote an electron from the bonding molecular orbital up here to the anti-bonding molecular orbital. And this is only temporary. Um, but it does tell you what wavelength of light will be absorbed by the ethene molecule. The wavelength is going to correspond to this energy transition of 690 kilojoules per mole. And so we can calculate the wave wavelength of light by looking at these equations over here on the left. We know that the an energy of a photon is equal to Planck's constant times, uh, times the frequency. And we know that the speed of light is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. So if we solve for the frequency, uh, we can go ahead and plug that in to this top equation here. And we can see the relationship between energy and wavelength. They are inversely proportional. And if we took this number, 690 kilojoules per mole, and we plug it into here, and we do the math, and we solve for the wavelength, uh, it turns out the wavelength of light that's absorbed by the ethene molecule will be approximately 172 nanometers. And so that turns out to be in the UV region. Remember, the visible spectrum, like we talked about in the last video, starts at approximately 400 nanometers. And so this, since this molecule absorbs in the UV region, it doesn't have any color. Let's move on to the next molecule over here. And uh, we can see that now we have some conjugation present, right? We have a double bond followed by a single bond followed by a double bond. And if I go ahead and highlight my pi electrons, right, for this molecule, there are four pi electrons this time. Each of these carbons is sp2 hybridized, so we have, uh, we have four p orbitals. Therefore, we have a total of four atomic orbitals for this molecule. MO theory says those four atomic orbitals are going to form four molecular orbitals, two bonding and two anti-bonding. So I can go ahead and put in my two bonding molecular orbitals and my two anti-bonding molecular orbitals like that. I have four pi electrons to fill, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, fill the lowest energy orbitals available. And now, if I take a look at the difference between these two, these two molecular orbitals, right? we have the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, the LUMO, and the highest occupied molecular or orbital, the HOMO. If I look at the energy difference between those two, I can see that it's gotten a little bit smaller than my previous example. And calculations will tell you that this is now approximately 544 kilojoules per mole energy difference between these two molecular orbitals. 
And so when you plug that number into, into your equation over here on the left once again, right, and you solve for the wavelength, it turns out that the wavelength of light absorbed by this conjugated molecule is approximately 218 nanometers. So we can see that we've increased We've increased the wavelength of light that's absorbed, right? We started with 172 for the molecule this time. We increase, uh, we, we now have a conjugated molecule that decreases the energy difference between these two molecular orbitals and therefore increases increases the wavelength of light absorbed since energy and wavelength are inversely proportional to each other. Let's go ahead and look at the next example, right? We have even more conjugation present. We have a total of six pi electrons now. Each of those carbons is sp2 hybridized, therefore giving us six atomic orbitals. And once again, those six atomic orbitals are going to give us six molecular orbitals, three bonding and three anti-bonding. So I go ahead and put in my three bonding molecular orbitals, and I go ahead and put in my three anti-bonding molecular orbitals. I fill in my six pi electrons, so that takes care of my six pi electrons like that. And I look at the difference in energy between my LUMO and my HOMO. And when this energy difference is calculated, right, we can see that it's even smaller than the previous example. This takes us down to approximately 461 kilojoules per mole. So when I plug that number in, into the equation on the left, I'm going to get a new wavelength of light that's absorbed, and the wavelength turns out to be approximately, so approximately 250 nanometers. So we can see once again that we've increased, we've increased the wavelength of light absorbed. And so you can see the trend, right? So from, from all these molecules, as you, as you increase the amount of conjugation present in a molecule, you decrease uh, the energy between, between the, uh, the HOMO and the LUMO, and therefore uh, you increase the wavelength of light that's absorbed. Now, 258 nanometers is still not in the visible spectrum, and so this molecule over here on the right is still not going to have a color. But you can imagine, as you increase the amount of conjugation, you're going to keep increasing the wavelength of light absorbed, and eventually you're going to get into the visible spectrum, and you'll be able to see a color. And so let's go ahead and show an example of a molecule that does that. This one has a lot more conjugation than our previous examples and it has enough conjugation that it's going to absorb in the visible spectrum. So this one turns out to have a, uh, absorb a wavelength of approximately 455 nanometers. And we know that's now in the visible spectrum. And it turns out to be pretty much in the blue region. So this molecule is going to absorb light in the, in the uh, is, is going to absorb wavelengths of blue light, and as we saw in the last video, therefore it's going to reflect wavelengths that are orange light, and so this molecule is going to appear orange. And this molecule is beta carotene, which we all know uh, gives oranges its color. And, uh, and again, it's due to this conjugation, right? This is an extensively conjugated molecule. And, and that is what changes the wavelength uh, that's absorbed and why it appears orange. So, uh, so the trick, the trick or the key to color, I should say, the key to color is conjugation. The more conjugation you have, uh, the higher the wavelength of light is absorbed. And, uh, and therefore, you can determine the colors of your molecules this way. In the next video, we're going to look at a few famous colored organic uh, chemistry molecules, and uh, I'll also talk a little bit about the history behind them.